Let's talk for a minute about the fire triangle. For any sustained fire, we need three elements. And those elements are oxygen, which is present in, at about 21% in the air all around us, and fuel, And the third element is heat. If we pause right here to say oxygen and fuel, this basically describes the state of these sticks right now. These sticks are sitting in the air and obviously aren't burning and won't burn until we introduce the third element, heat. So these are the three sides of the fire triangle. We need all three of them in the, in the proper proportions to create a fire that will sustain itself. Now, obviously, if this piece of quartz represents introducing a small amount of heat into the system, if we were to try to light a large stick on fire, such as one of these, with a small amount of heat, say from a lighter, well, it's not going to work. We need to factor in the size of the fuel relative to the size of the heat that we introduce. So a small amount of heat requires a very fine material initially, and this is our tinder. So what happens? We introduce a small amount of heat to our tinder in the presence of oxygen and it ignites. It continues to burn. It creates enough heat for us to then introduce our first and smallest size of fuel, these matchstick size pieces. So the small amount of heat lights the tinder, it burns in the presence of oxygen, which then is enough heat to ignite this size of fuel. This cycle is repeated with the larger, the larger amount of heat generated by that initial size of fuel. And that in turn is enough to ignite the next largest size fuel, in this case represented by these pencil sized pieces. So once again, the fuel, heated fuel in the presence of oxygen creates more heat. This cycle is repeated one, uh, one more time so that we can ignite the largest size of fuel, which in turn creates even more heat. So in the center of our triangle, we've got a small amount of heat with increasing amounts of fuel size in the presence of oxygen. So this is really a upward running arrow that represents the dynamic chain reaction with increased heat and fuel size in the presence of oxygen. It's important to note that this, you know, very strict separation of fuel sizes is really for demonstration purposes only. Yes, we need these different sizes, but we don't always have to separate them out this cleanly. In fact, it's fairly impractical to do so in most cases. You can troubleshoot problems with a fire by taking a look at your fire triangle. If we have a very smoky fire and it's not flaming up and burning well, it's likely because we have insufficient oxygen. So we can introduce more air into the system by blowing on it, by separating the pieces, or by using an elevator fire lit. If we have insufficient heat, our next largest, and we're say, let's say we're burning these, our next largest size of fuel will fail to ignite and the fire will start to diminish. Obviously, if we have inadequate fuel, we will consume whatever fuel that we're currently using and the fire will have nothing left to burn and it will also go out. So this is the fire triangle.